my skin is so fragile, any slightest friction, any slightest knock will cause my skin to tear and blister. The pain is immaculate, so much pain, immense pain every day. It's hard to stay positive, but I do try. I've realized this condition for now is here to stay. And one motto I use is never give up. They said I'd live for about three days. That's what they told my parents. But I'm 15 years old now, so screw them. I started karate for fun, but after I came here, I kind of realized this is a lot more beneficial to me than just a little bit of fun. Six thirty in the morning, we wake up, but there are some days when he's in a lot of pain because the mornings are the worst because the body is kind of stiff. It's um, when you do the body as well along with the legs, it can take up to four to five hours. My name is Fazil. I was born with recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa, shortened RDEB. It basically means my skin is so fragile, any slightest friction, any slightest knock will cause my skin to tear and blister. So I have to change bandages every single day because I have wounds all over my body from my head to my toe. So right now we're changing my leg dressings. I get infections a lot, nearly every month I have a new infection and it has to be treated with antibiotics. When I was born, I had the condition and they said I'd live for about three days. That's what they told my parents, but um, I'm 15 years old now, so screw them. So the wounds and blisters are all over my body from my toes to all the way up to my neck. Even my head, as you can see my forehead here, has wounds up there. They're basically everywhere. I can get them externally and internally. I can get them in my esophagus. I can get blisters and wounds in my mouth. Every single day, I have to take a load of different painkillers. The pain is immaculate, so much pain, immense pain every day. During the dressings, I'm usually always on my phone. Distraction is a big thing. Without a distraction, the only thing you concentrate on is the pain. It's so cold. So EB makes my everyday life really difficult because every single thing I do in my life I have to think about before I do. I have to think what are going to be the consequences of this, how will it impact my condition. So even if it's the littlest of things like turning around the other side in bed or even standing up after I've been sitting down for a period of time, everything is really difficult. Even without nails, when we itch, the slightest itch on our skin, the whole skin has come off. Hey guys, it's Fazio and welcome to A Day in My Life with my medications and creams. I was really shy at the start to talk about my condition. I used to hide my hands with my jumper. I used to hate it when people were staring at me. I did one speech and after that, I think my confidence just built up. I think I kind of realized I need to raise awareness for this condition. I think it's when I posted my first video and I saw how much people enjoyed it. The most recent one was on my TikTok. I was raising um, awareness for quite a person that's out there about my religion. So I'm Muslim and I was doing reminders about the holy month of Ramadan for all the Muslims. It was just like my most viewed video on my TikTok and loads of awareness was spread for um, obviously my religion, but also then people checked out my channel and saw my other videos. So EV was raised awareness for as well. Now creams, we have eye drops, day and night. Then we have special flaminals, flaminal forte and flaminal hydro. These are special for wounds. And this is meloxy. This is also for wounds because we alternate what we use on wounds because our wounds get used to the creams. And that's it for a day in my life. Thanks for watching, bye. So uh, I've grown up while seeing Fazil grow up with this condition as well. So I've always seen him in pain. I've always seen him through different times of the day, through different things. But then sometimes there's also a fun aspect of it where it just bonds you together more. I think he like copes it really well with this condition. I'm proud of Fuzzle the way he's um, raising awareness for condition. He's very nice. He always plays with me. I always like to play with him a lot. When I'm in public, the first thing people always do is stare. It's funny that they think I can't see it. And then the funniest of all is 
you know those gossip aunties and all those people, they'll stare at me, they'll have a whole group of people with them, they'll stare, they'll whisper something back and then they'll stare again and they'll start pointing. Obviously my mum's the sweetest person in the world, she doesn't want me to feel like she hasn't done anything. My mum has actually gone to the family and said, is there a problem, why are you staring? Just so she can show me she cares and obviously if they have a question, come and ask the question instead of standing there and just staring. When Fazil was born, there was a little tiny scar on his lip. Apart from that, he was absolutely fine. But then they took him to the special care baby unit. The next morning when we saw him, actually, he was um, all wrapped up in bandages because wherever they pick him up, they touch him, his skin start coming off from there. Then they called the EB nurse from Great Ormond Street to do the skin biopsy. And then they told us that this is his condition. I adore him, the way he's coping, and still he's going to school, he's going for karate, he's got his own hobbies. I'm proud of him anyway. Well, Marshall, I, I hope all the best. His pen go away and then he will be fine. And one day the cure of EB will come and he will be fine. I hope all the best. like two, three, four years ago, I started karate. When Fazil first came here, he'd been, uh, he'd been turned down for many other clubs. He went to a few, they didn't want to know. When Fazil came here, I looked at him, looked in his eyes, and I thought to myself, of course you can, of course you can. He literally adapts the whole session just so I can do it. He teaches me, it's kind of like non-contact karate, but the thing is, I know the pressure I can go to. People can learn from Fazil. I learn from Fazil because I look at his the determination and everything that's going on with him. He still comes here. I started karate for fun, but after I came here, I kind of realized this is a lot more beneficial to me than just a little bit of fun. I'm forgetting about the condition and I'm more building my inner strength here. A message I'd give to someone else with EB is never give up. The pain is here, but the pain is here to end. One day there will be ease after the hardship. If um, the cure isn't found, I do maybe, <laughs> I never know what the future holds, but I do want to hopefully be the one to help find the cure for EB. We have two trans kids. Anyone can be whoever they want. I'm just owning it. Our family is seen to be very unconventional. So I had kids and I can't be hot anymore. Like, moms are hot too. People say I look like a thug, but I love thugs. I take that as a compliment. I'm bored of people thinking that I cannot be intimate. I'm a young, single, hot piece of disabled booty. I feel like I'm going to look at myself and be like, who is that? Life is way too short to be hiding. It is my story, it is my truth.